All right, so today we're going to be going over how to solve equations that have multiplication and division. Uh, first, I want to go through a scenario again where we can realize what the opposite or the inverse operations are. Um, so first off, let's look at this. If we start off with a 15, and let's say we multiply it by 2. 15 times 2 is 30. So then you can ask yourself, how do I undo multiplying by 2? How do I get back to 15, make the 30 a 15? And if you take 30 and you divide it by 2, that gives you 15. So we were able to just remind ourselves that if you multiply by a number and then you divide it by that same number, you just undid that multiplying. Multiplying and dividing will undo each other. So here, what if we start with the 15 and we divide it by 3? 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now you can ask yourself, well, how, how do I undo that dividing by 3? How do I make that 5 back to the 15? Well, 5 times 3 gives us 15. So... If you divide um, by a number and then you multiply by that same number, that undid the dividing. You can undo dividing by multiplying. You can undo multiplying by dividing because they are opposites. So let's go over a couple of examples. First off, what you ask yourself on this 9a equals 81, you find the variable and you say, what's happening to that variable? What's keeping it from being by itself. Well, there's this 9 here. Then you say, well, what, what is happening with 9 and A? Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? When two numbers are smushed together like this 9 and A, that means we're multiplying. So what's keeping A from being by itself is that it's being multiplied by 9. So then you ask yourself, well, what is the opposite of multiplying by 9? The opposite of multiplying is to divide. So I'm going to divide by 9 to undo this multiplying by 9. Um, and if you do that on one side of the equation, you have to do that on the other side. So one side of the equal sign and the other side of the equal sign. So on both sides, I'm going to divide by 9. Then you look and see what is left. So you read it. Um, one side and the other side. On the left side, I have 9a divided by 9. So the two that are like terms are the 9 and the 9. I can combine those. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So I'm left with 1a. And on the right side, I have 81 divided by 9, which is 9. So I have 1a equals 9, which is the same as just a equals 9. You don't need that one there. Now let's look at the one on the right. Again, drawing this line down uh, where the equal sign is helps you to see the two sides of the equation. In this case, the variable, the r, is on the right side, but you still go through the same process. You find the variable and you say, what's happening that's keeping r from being by itself? There's a 7 here. When 7 and R are smushed together like that, that means that they're being multiplied together. So then you say, well, what's the opposite of multiplying by 7? What's the inverse? How can I undo multiplying by 7? And you can do that by dividing by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. It cancels out. If you do that on the right side, though, if you divide by 7 on the right side, you have to also divide by 7 on the left side. So 42 divided by 7 is 6. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and then you also have the R. And don't forget your equal sign. The equal sign stays right there in that middle line. So this is the same as R in a 6 or you can write, rewrite this as r equals 6 instead of 6 equals r. Let's go over this example here. So first you say what's happening to the variable that's keeping it from being by itself. 
So this D and 4, this is saying D divided by 4. So D isn't by itself because it's being divided by 4. Then you say, well, what? What's the opposite of dividing by 4? If I want to undo dividing by 4, what do I do? You multiply by 4. So you can put it like this. Oops, I don't know why I wrote a 9. You can put it like this right underneath to do that on both sides of the equal sign. Or some people like to instead put it off to the side. So maybe they'll put a uh, times 4 here and a times four here. Either way works. When you write it to the side like this, it helps because you can see that you have a four up in the numerator and a four in the denominator. Four divided by four is one. That cancels out. So you're left with a one D. And on the right side, you have nine times four, which is 36. So you have one D equals 36 or D equals 36. Same with the one on the right, except for this one, the variables on the other side of the equal sign, but it's still the same process. You say, what's keeping that variable, that F, from being alone? This is saying F divided by eight. So I can undo dividing by eight by multiplying by eight. So I'm gonna put the dot here instead this time. So I'm multiplying by 8 on both sides. And I know that dividing by 8, multiplying by 8 cancels out. So I'm just going to have an F by itself. And on the left side, I have 1 times 8, which is 16. So I have 16 equals F, which is the same as saying F equals 16. The one other way I want to type a problem I want to show you is when there are these negative signs here. So if you look at the one here on the left, when you see a minus sign or negative sign, you don't want to automatically think that that means subtraction. If we think of what's happening to x, keeping x from being by itself, this is not saying that we are subtracting 3 from x. This is negative 3 smushed up against x. So it is being multiplied by negative 3. x is being multiplied by negative 3. Then you say, well, what's the opposite, the inverse of multiplying by negative 3? And that is to divide by negative 3. Because negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. So you have to do that on both sides of the equal sign. Remember to draw your line down the middle to signify the two sides of the, the equation. So on the left side, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. You could just cancel it out, or you can write a 1 if you want. And then I have an x. And then negative 9 divided by, oops, I forgot, a negative 3 would be positive 3. The same over here on the right. I have both sides of the equal sign. I want to ask myself what's keeping x from being by itself. It is being divided by negative 4. I'm not subtracting 4. I'm dividing by a negative number. So to undo dividing by negative 4, I'm going to multiply by negative 4. So you can write it to the side like this or you can write it underneath. I'm going to write it to the side this time because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. So I'm just left with 1x, and on the right side, I have 3 times negative 4 is negative 12.